So we're going to talk in this chapter about atomic theory, but most of the discoveries in atomic theory came through um, looking at light. So just a reminder of things that travel as waves, you know that they have a wavelength. The abbreviation for that is the Greek letter lambda, um, and that's just the distance from between two peaks. Remember, a peak is the top, the trough is the bottom, and the height above the origin here is the amplitude. So if you were talking about a sound wave, for instance, the amplitude would be how loud it was. For a light wave, it's how bright it is. Um, there's also a frequency, which you can't really show on this diagram, okay, which is abbreviated and a little hard to write with this funny Greek letter. Sorry, I didn't draw it very well. It looks kind of like that. Um, you'll see it written a whole bunch of time, and you'll get used to it. But frequency is the number of waves that pass kind of any point in a, in a second. And it's usually measured in units of hertz. Okay, named after a guy named hertz, not the rental car. So HZ. Um, or you can just write 1 over second. That's what a hertz equals. Or you can write seconds to the minus 1. And the relationship between frequency and wavelength is that if I take the wavelength and multiply by the frequency, ah, that's my first good frequency, um, it equals a constant, and that constant is the speed of light. Okay, so C is the speed of light, and it equals 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. You've probably seen this diagram before, it's the electromagnetic spectrum. These are a bunch of things that travel by waves. Um, from all the way over on the right side here, we have things like radio waves. Um, in the middle, this little section right here, okay, which is blown up, is where our visible light is. Okay, On this right side are all the things with a low frequency or a high wavelength. And everything over on the left here are things with high frequency or low wavelengths. The higher the frequency, the more energy it has, and we say more really the more dangerous it is. So if you look at the visible light here in the middle, um, visible light isn't harmful to us. And just to the red, just to the right here, we have IR, infrared. Okay, but to the left, we have the UV rays. That's the part of the sunshine that can give us a sunburn. Okay, so as we move to the left, so a visible right, light's okay. UV seems like it's a little dangerous. We use sunscreen. X-rays, and when we have X-rays, we wear big lead aprons. And then gamma rays, they'll just kill you. Just try a problem where we look at the um, comparing the frequency and the and the wavelength. So what's the frequency of light with a wavelength of 34.5 nanometers? So first it looks like we might want to change that. Okay, remember nanometers? Okay, nano 9. So we're going to have 10 to the 9th nanometers in a meter. So I'm just going to call this 34.5 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And then our formula is C is lambda times frequency. So 3 times 10 to the 8th is 34.5 times 10 to the minus 9 times the frequency. So now the frequency comes out to be 8.70 times 10 to the 15th. And again, the units are just hertz. Okay, and that's really all there is to waves and frequency and wavelength.